Hi everyone, thanks for watching Lori Wired, and in this video we're going to be looking at what C-style pointers actually look like in RISC-V assembly. Now pointers are really useful because they actually store the address of another variable in memory. And this is used if we're declaring an array, creating a string, or maybe even allocating some new memory or calling a function. But what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be taking a simple C program and translating that over to RISC-V assembly so that we can understand exactly what the underlying processor is doing when we're declaring those pointers and actually setting values based off of of those memory locations. So let's get right into it and see what that looks like. I'm going to open up my favorite RISC-V simulator and I'll make the link to this available in the comments section of this video. But this allows you to upload your own custom C program and then compile that over and see what that looks like inside of RISC-V assembly. Or you can even upload your own custom RISC-V assembly program, which we're going to be doing today. And then you can actually step through this program for every single instruction and examine the contents of the registers, memory, or even get additional information about the instructions that you're running. So let's take a look on the left hand side and examine our C program that's going to be demonstrating our pointers. Now what we're doing is we're just declaring a new integer value and setting it to the value 5, but the most important part is that we have this additional int star num pointer that is going to be a pointer to an integer value, and then we're going to be setting that num pointer value to the actual address of num in memory. Then we're going to be using that num pointer value dereferencing it with this star to actually set the value of num based on this num pointer that we set to the memory address of num. So the main thing to note here is that we're just having an additional pointer value and we're able to dereference that pointer to actually set the original value of num as well. Now if we go through and compile this program, our online simulator is indeed going to give us the assembly instructions for this, but if we scroll down to our main label where this function is actually declared, it's kind of funny because it knows what we're doing. We might be doing all of these different instructions over here and setting pointers, but in the end it realizes that the only thing of consequence happening is this return zero at the end, so it's actually basically optimizing all of our instructions away to only load the immediate value into the return register and then return that value. So this brings me to how we're going to actually create our own assembly program so we can step through those different instructions without them being optimized away from us. So I'm going to bring up my notepad plus plus and we're going to create a new assembly file where we're going to upload our new code that we're going to step through. And I'm going to try and mirror this C code on the left as much as I can so that we can demonstrate walking through that program and seeing what that would actually look like if we were running this on a RISC-V process. Let me just make this a little bigger. Maybe we'll make this the whole screen. Perfect. So now we've got our C program on the left and our assembly instructions are going to go on the right hand side. Now, first thing we need to do is we need to set our data. So we're going to create the dot data segment for our program. So we can do that with dot data. Now we're going to have our first variable, which is going to be this num variable. So I'm going to create a new label that's going to point to our value. And we'll just do num, create a new label. And then the actual value is going to be a word. So do dot word. Remember this points to four bytes of data. And then we'll put by default the value five in there, just like we did in our C program. And then now we need our important variable, which is going to be our num pointer, which is going to point to the memory address of this num variable. So I'm going to create a new label, num pointer. And we're working in a 32-bit architecture for this RISC-V processor for our simulator at the moment. So remember, 32-bit architecture is going to be four bytes of data, and then our dot word is going to be another four bytes of data. So we're actually going to have one more word here, but this time, this word is going to point to an address instead of an integer value. And I'm going to declare dot word, and then we'll just default to zero. It's kind of like setting it to a null pointer. 
And then we can move on. So we have our two variables, but we're actually gonna go and need to write our instructions now. So I'm gonna create my text segment. Remember, this is gonna be where all of your actual assembly instructions are gonna go. And then we'll create our main label, just like we did on the left-hand side. And now this is the point where we actually want to get the address of num and put this address inside of this num pointer value. So we're actually going to take the address of where this num variable is and put that inside of our num pointer. So that's going to be that 32-bit memory address where this 5 value is stored. So there's a couple ways that we can do this, and pretty much all of them are going to be correct as long as they compile and work. But we're going to be using the base instructions for RISC-V assembly instead of pseudo instructions. Pseudo instructions are just a little bit more human readable, and they give you nice additional instructions like load address. But in this case, our simulator actually only supports these base instructions, but I think that's really good because you're understanding and talking directly to the underlying processor instead of using these kind of cheat pseudo instructions. So you really have to know exactly what you're doing. Now, first of all, we actually want to load the address of num into memory. And there are a couple instructions that we can use to actually do this. The first is going to be load upper immediate. So the mnemonic is LUI to signify this. And the weird thing about these base instructions is there's actually limits to the number of bits that they can process at a time. So you have to kind of separate these into two parts where you're working with the upper 20 bits of a memory address and then the lower 12 bits of the memory address. So 12 plus 20 is gonna be our 32 bit total address but we're going to have to work with these in two parts. So let's work with the upper part first. So load upper immediate, and then let's choose a destination register. I'm just gonna pick T0. And then we have this special macro, which is going to be high. And this is going to take the upper 20 bits of our specified memory address, which is going to be num. So now what's happening here is we're taking the upper 20 bits of the num address and we're going to be storing that inside of this T0 register. And now we actually have to have a second instruction that's going to load the lower 12 bits into this register as well. What we can do is we can use add immediate and then we're going to do our current T0 register as the destination. And then we're going to need the lower bits as well as the upper bit. So we're going to do the current value of T0, which currently contains the higher 20 bits of num. And then we're going to use another macro similar to high. And it's just going to be low. Now this is going to get the lower 12 bits of our num. And now we successfully have all 32 bits of this num address stored inside of our T0 register. So now we actually have that memory address stored inside of our T0 register, but remember the goal was to actually put this address inside of our num pointer variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to use this same idea to bring in the address of our num pointer variable so that we can actually set the value at that location. So same thing here, we can use our load upper immediate instruction one more time, but this time we're going to be taking the value of num pointer and actually let's put that in a new register, we'll just put this in T1. And then finally, we can use our store word instruction to actually store the memory address of num into this num pointer variable. So we don't need to get the lower bits because the store word instruction will actually allow us to do that and specify it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do SW for store word, since we're storing a word, which is going to be that 32-bit address. And then we're going to take the source, which is in this T0 register, and this is our num address. So we're going to take T0, which is our num address, and then put this inside of our low num pointer plus the upper bits are currently stored inside of our T1 register. Now we actually have our store word instruction, which is going to take the address of num currently inside of this T0 register and put this inside of num pointer. 
So we should be pretty much good to go. Now our num pointer is actually pointing to the memory location of our num data right here. So I think we should take a moment to actually run this program and see what it looks like before we actually try dereferencing that pointer and changing that num value accordingly. So I'm just going to save this and I'm going to upload this program to our RISC-V simulator. Let's just do load an assembly file and we'll find our assembly, which is going to be this main.s that I already saved on my disk. And this is loading our file into the actual program. So if you see, we have our data that we declared and we have our instructions that are going to be setting our pointer value and everything here is just padding around this. So I'm going to add a breakpoint on this instruction so that we can stop here and kind of examine the actual values as we step through this program. So let me move this over here, make sure we can see everything. Got my breakpoint set, so I'm just gonna hit play. Now we've paused here, and if I go to my memory, I can scroll down all the way and actually see that in my data segment, I have space for the two variables that I've declared. First of all is my num pointer, which is just a null pointer at the moment. We set it to the value zero. And then we also have our num variable, which stores the value five. And remember, we're trying to make this num pointer store the actual address of this num variable. What is the address? It's going to be this hex value 64, which is the actual memory location of where that value 5 is stored. Now we can step through and let's watch this data actually change so that our num pointer is pointing to our num value. So we're going to just step over and step over. So now we've actually loaded the address of num into our t0 register. And if I go over here, I can see that my T0 register currently has the actual value put inside of it. And if you want to double check, this 100 in decimal is actually going to be the equivalent in hexadecimal. So all I can do is just go decimal to hex calculator. Just look at that. So let me just take 100. And it is indeed 64 in hex, so if you wanted to double check, you can see decimal. And then if we scroll down in memory, we're going to be looking at the hex value. It is indeed at the location 64 in hex in memory. So let's continue on and see this value of num pointer actually change to hold that hexadecimal value. So I'm going to step over my instructions. Step over step over and this was storing the word value into that num pointer. So if we go back to memory and scroll down, sure enough we can see now the value 64 is put inside of our num pointer so we can actually get the address of that num variable in memory. So now we've seen what it looks like to actually get that address of our variable and store it inside of our pointer, but let's see what it looks like to actually dereference and use that pointer to set that new value accordingly. So I'm going to open back up my assembly instructions, and we're going to start using some new instructions here to actually get our value that num pointer is now pointing to. Now the instruction here is going to be load word, and the mnemonic for that is LW. So we have LW, and then let's just reuse our T0 register as the new destination. And we actually already have the value of num pointer or the address of that stored inside of our T1 register for the higher part of it. So we can simply take what we already have and then use this to actually get the value that num pointer is pointing to based on the lower 12 bits plus the upper 20 bits that we already calculated up here. And if we didn't have this calculation, all we would need to do is use a couple instructions like this to actually get that value. Now what this LW instruction is doing is it's taking this address and then it's seeing what word value is actually stored at that address and then it's going to be loading that into this T0 register. So that address is actually going to be the address of num since that's what our num pointer was pointing to. So now that we actually have that address stored into T0, 
Let's set a new value for our actual num variable. I'm going to do load immediate, and then we'll just take the value six, which we used on the left-hand side, and then let's just put this in another register, let's say t2, and then we'll store that immediate value six into here. And now for our final instruction, we're just going to use our store word one more time. So we can do store word, and then our value is inside of t2, that's gonna be our six. So we'll do t2, and then we actually have the address of where we wanna store that value six already inside of our t0 register. Now the nice thing about using the register for store word is that we can actually reference the full 32-bit value instead of having to break that into the upper 20 bits and the lower 12 bits that we have to do for labels like we do up here. All we need to do is take that value of t0 and we'll just do the zeroth offset of that. So if you wanted to offset that and put that somewhere else, you could change this offset value, but we're just setting that to the very first available location. So now we're actually going to take that immediate value six and store that into our num variable by referencing this num pointer and getting that address from that additional num pointer variable. So let's upload this and see what this actually looks like while it's running. So I'm gonna save this. And let's upload our new assembly file, main.s. And I'm going to get rid of this breakpoint since we already saw what it looked like to actually set the value of num pointer to that num variable. I'm actually going to break right here when we're getting ready to load that value and actually store the new immediate value of six into that. So let me just run our program and we're gonna break right here. We've hit our breakpoint, so let's double check our memory. Scroll down, see what we've got. Currently, the value of num pointer is in hex 70. And then if you see the location of num in memory, it is indeed at location 70. And we currently have the value five in it, which is the default value that we gave it. So let's step over and see what it looks like once we're actually setting that value. So I'm gonna do step over, and then if I do load word, this is setting my T0 register. So I'm gonna go to my registers and see what's going on with T0 now. It's now set to the value 112. So let's just double check with our hexadecimal calculator. This is the value 70. And remember that num value was stored at address 70 in hexadecimal. So that looks correct. So we'll continue on, step over. And now we've got our new value inside of our T2 register. Then we're gonna take that T2 register and store the value in there into our actual num variable. And this is the store word instruction that we're gonna be using. And the address is going to be coming from our T0 register, remember. So we'll step over that. And then if we go back to our memory location, We can see we did indeed set the value six by dereferencing that num pointer variable and actually using the address stored inside of that to change the new value to six instead of the default value of five. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired everyone. In this video we saw what C style pointers actually look like in RISC-V assembly. We took an entire basic C program that was dereferencing a pointer and setting the value accordingly. We translated that over to RISC-V assembly. Then we stepped through that entire program and saw how we could take the actual addresses of the num variable that we were working with, store that inside of a pointer to that variable. We also saw how when we were using base instructions in RISC-V assembly, we actually had to reference labels based off of two parts using the upper and the lower bits, but we were able to use these instructions to successfully set our actual new variable. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired everyone, and I'll catch you in the next video. Let's see. Again, pro gamer move. Gotta keep feeling the beat.